Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Golf Thoughts. On today's episode, we talk about what to think if you are one under going into the 18th hole and you've never broken par before. Now, if you can relate to this, you're probably in the select few. I've uh, I did a little bit of research on how many scratch golfers there are in America, at least, and I think there were around 24 million golfers in America, and only one one to two percent of those can shoot around scratch, uh, or can regularly shoot around par, uh, which makes that about, I guess, two, 240,000 is one percent of 24 million. That's some quick math. It's not that quick. I read that on Google. But yeah, it's around 250,000 to 500,000, somewhere in there, of players in America that can shoot around par. And globally, I think it's around 600,000 scratch golfers. So if you can relate to this, you are in a very select few amount of golfers, relatively speaking. I mean, 600,000 is a lot of golfers. But nonetheless, if you can relate count yourself lucky, but put yourself in this scenario. You are one under through 17 holes. You've never broken par before. You're a good player because you've got to be a pretty good player to get to one under par through 17, but today is the best day you've ever had, and you inevitably feel that feeling. You've, you've been close before. You, you might have sh you might have been even par through 17, one or two over through 17, but this is the best and closest you've gotten. So you're on the 18th tee box. You've never broken par before. What do you think in this scenario? Well, first of all, let's break down why this mentality might not be the right mentality in general. Thinking in terms of I'm one under par, uh, I'm through 17 holes, I, I want to shoot this score for the first time in my life, those, those thoughts are based on, you, are based too much on caring about score and based on the importance of score and based on the importance of how many holes you're through and based on what I need to do on this entire hole, what I need to shoot for this entire round. A lot of these are uncontrollable things. So basing your mentality, basing uh, your goals on something that is somewhat out of your control, which is what you're going to shoot for the day, it could lead to, lead to some frustration, some un unnecessary nerves, unnecessary nervousness. So I would say, what should you think in this scenario? Always, in every scenario, you should always boil it back down to what can I control and what can I not control? So in this situation, let's start with what can you not control? Well, you cannot control the conditions of the golf course. You can't control where, like if your ball, let's say you hit a great shot and it gets a bad kick and it bounces into the rough or it, uh, you hit a decent drive but it's heading towards some trees and you get directly square behind a tree where in some other instances, it could have been a, like one yard shorter, one yard longer, and you would have been just fine. You can't control that kind of scenario. You can't control the conditions. All of a sudden it starts raining on your 18th hole and you feel like the golf gods just don't want you to break par. So you can't control conditions. You can't control weather. Um, and really you can't control your swing on the 18th hole. You can't control your swing on the golf course at all. You, the only time you can control your swing is in practice. And you, maybe you can relate to this, is you're out on the golf course, you feel like your swing is bad, and you try to fix it. And you spend the entire day working on your swing only to just hit terrible shots all day. You might hit a few good ones, just enough to keep you thinking that this might be working. But once you realize, wow, this is exhausting, I'm tired of trying this, I am just going to play. I'm just going to let my game go. All of a sudden, you start to free up and you start to play a little better. Not always, but you start to play a little better. And the, the freeing up, the, the lack of control, the letting go of the uncontrollable allows you to free up and start making 
good swings, the swings that you've done in practice. So thinking that you can show up on 18 and control your game to make a par is, is trying to take an uncontrollable into your control. So those are some uncontrollables, weather, course conditions, your swing. So what are some controllables? Well, most controllables are boiled down to the inner game, the mental game. That's things like reactions, attitude, course strategy, uh, personality, not personality, that's kind of who you are as a person. Um, I guess like how you react to things, how you handle things, how, how you go about things, your attitude, you, the way you handle your carry yourself, your character, those kind of things. Uh, choosing the proper target, choosing the proper club, arriving at, an, an, at a specific target, committing to your target, trusting in your ability, all of those things are controllables. So when you're on that tee box on 18 and you're one under and you know you, the knowledge can't escape your brain, it's, you can't fake that. You can't lie your brain. You can't trick your brain into not thinking about something. It's like saying, don't think of a purple elephant. A purple elephant pops up in your mind. So you can't magically not think about being one under, needing a par to shoot your best score ever, to, to break par for the first time in your life, to, to shoot in the red numbers for the first time ever. You can't force yourself to not think that. But what you can do is in, instead, or at the same time, say, okay, I know empirically that if I have a four on this par four, I will break par. I will shoot under par for the first time. I know that. I'm going to go and get that out on the table. I'm going to go ahead and expose what, what could damage me. I'm going to go ahead and, and bring out to light the the scary thing that's in my head but then don't stop there what most people do is they stop there they say oh i need a par i need to make a par on this hole if i don't make a par i'll blow it i'll choke i'll everyone will laugh at me everyone will think i i just can't do it and then i'll think i can never break par i mean this was my closest chance this is an easy par four you know emotions start getting up so boil it down to controllables okay this is a tee shot Okay, it's a driver. It's a it's a it's a hole that I can easily get a driver without trouble too close on the right or too close on the left. So it's a driver. So we're gonna hit driver and I'm gonna pick a specific target or I'm gonna pick a target that I love and I'm gonna commit to it. And I'm I'm gonna love my target and then I'm gonna trust in my ability to hit it to that target based on how I know I am as a golfer. And clearly, I'm a good golfer, so I'm going to trust that, that ability that I'm a good golfer. And then I'm going to let it rip. I'm going to just allow my body, I'm going to allow my natural skill to send the ball to that target that I want to go to. And then wherever it goes, I'm going to accept the result. And then it's time to move on, because that shot is now in the past. That shot is now an uncontrollable. So... Time to move on to the next controllable, which in this moment, there's no golf shot to hit. It's let's walk to the next shot or let's get in the car and ride to the next shot. That's your controllable in this moment. Worrying about the next one, worrying about two shots from now, worrying about the par that you need to make, worrying about where your drive went, worrying about the 17 holes before, I wish I had made that one more birdies to give myself a cushion. All of these things are past and future they're uncontrollable. Right now, let's take my mind off of golf. What's going to be for dinner? What are we eating in the clubhouse after? Well, am I going to be hanging out with buddies? Am I going to be, you know, like, let's take our mind away from golf for a sec. And now you've arrived at your golf ball. Now you really feel the pressure setting in. You happen to hit a good one, a good shot, and you are in the fairway, 155 yards from the flag. So, again, all of the uncontrollables start popping up in your mind. Man, this is an easy shot. It's like a, it's like a smooth eight iron. I'm just going to hit it on the green, and I'll be able to two-putt for par. And I'll finally break par for the first time in my life. 
that those are thoughts. They're true. All of them are true, but none of them are in your control. You can't control where you hit your eight iron. You can control where you where your target for your eight iron. You can't control how close you hit it. You can choose where you would like to start your eight iron. You can't control whether or not you're going to make your birdie putt, whether or not you're going to lag your birdie putt up close, whether or not if you miss the green, you're going to get up and down. You can't control any of that. What you can control is shoot it with your laser. It's 155. Toss some grass up. Okay, it's the wind is hurting. I feel about three yards, so it's 158. Okay, the greens are a little firm today, so I want to land it short of the flag. Let's say five yards short, so 158 down to 153. Okay, uh, it's slightly downhill, so 153 plays more like 150, I think. Okay, now it's not an easy 8-iron anymore. Now it's like a full 9-iron because you know the greens are firm and you know it's downhill, so you feel the ability to get that 9-iron there. So you've taken into account these factors that maybe you wouldn't have if you had been consumed by the uncontrollables. So since you've taken these controllables into account, you've come to a very specific, concise, good, confident decision of what club you need to hit, and then you choose your target based on your dispersion pattern, because you know this, because you've been taking stats, another controllable. So you know, okay, I can't hit it, I, there's this bunker left, I don't want to hit it in that, there's this hazard on the right side of the green, I don't want to hit it in that. So based on my 9-iron, 150-yard dispersion pattern, I like my I like my target here. I'm going to center it here, and I can miss it right by 12.3 yards, or I can miss it left by 12.3 yards. And we'll get into dispersion patterns in a future episode, I promise you. So you have chosen your club, you've chosen the yardage, You've chosen your specific target that you love and you can get confidence because you know you've chosen a good target and you've know, you know you've chosen something based on real numbers and real stats and and what more could you have confidence in than real than reality so you can trust in your ability because now that you've gotten all of these these things out of the way you've got your controllables checked off now it's like okay i'm gonna step up and hit it. I'm going to trust in my ability to hit my nine iron to that target, to that yardage. I know I can do it. I've done it many, many times before. And this is when nerves could keep continue to creep up, but you just continue to expose those nerves, acknowledge them. I, I am feeling my, I feel my heart rate. I feel the need to hit this close. I feel the need to not pull this into the bunker. All of these things start coming up. Expose them. Talk them out. Like, breathe them out. Do a breathing exercise where you're breathing out the feelings of nerves. And in that moment, tell yourself, I have the ability to do this. What would an elite player think in this moment? They would think, I'm, I know I can hit at this target. So you do. And you make a good swing or you make a swing, let's say. And you hit it in the left bunker. You know what? That's okay. Because you did everything you could control. And now you go up to the bunker and you go through the same process. You know what I'm saying? Are you starting to get this a little bit? You, you acknowledge the uncontrollables. You acknowledge the nerves, the feelings. But then you layer on top of them the controllables, the things that you can control. And maybe you break par for the first time ever. Maybe you make par. And you shoot one under and you shoot red numbers and it's awesome. And finally you met, you did this goal that you've always wanted to, or maybe you don't, but you can know that that round is now in the past and you have things that you can learn from that round, whether you did it or whether you did not do it. And that's a controllable learning from your past is a controllable getting mad, getting emotional, Wishing that something had changed, wishing you had done something differently, wishing you had hit the eight iron, the smooth eight iron instead of the full nine. You know what I mean? So accepting the past and moving on, using the past to learn from and moving on. That is a controllable. And all of this is 
is what you are supposed to think if you are one under going into the last hole. It's not how to magically shoot, a, make a par when you're one under going into the last hole and you've never broken par before. It It is what to think if. And if you do those things, it gives you a much better chance. It allows your natural game to come out more likely because you're choosing good targets. You're layering on top of your nerves good things, positive thoughts, or rather neutral thoughts, not overly positive, not overly negative. So you're doing all the things you can control, and that's your job in every moment. So that's what to think if you're one under going into the last hole and you've never broken par before. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, I would love it if you shared it with someone. Uh, subscribe to the podcast on Apple. Uh, subscribe to The Mental Golf Show. Um, that would be amazing if you did that. You can follow me at uh, on Twitter, at Josh Luke Nichols, uh, or at Mental Golf Show. And it's the same on Instagram, at Josh Luke Nichols, at Mental Golf Show. Yeah, follow me wherever you want, and you can, you can get the next episode as soon as it comes out. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Catch you guys next time.